You are about to hear a tangled tale of family incest that spans over 500 years. We will follow some of the world's most powerful inbreds and their quest to keep the crown. We begin in 1566 with King James I. King James I was born to Mary Queen of Scots and her husband Henry Stuart in Edinburgh Castle in Scotland. When he was eight months old, an explosion burnt down his home and killed his father. At 15, he married Anne of Denmark. James was a Scottish king and ruled Scotland from 1567 as James VI, and then King of England and Ireland as James I from 1603 until his death in 1625. Forty years later, Mary was the first monarch to be Queen of Great Britain and was the daughter of James II and his first wife, Lady Anne Hyde. Out of eight, Mary and her sister Anne were the only ones to survive childhood. Mary had a first cousin through Charles I named William. They got engaged when Mary was only 15 and William was 27. My parents say we have to get married, cool? Sure. Mary didn't like this but she eventually warmed to William. Her dad, James, was trying to shove God down everyone's throats, so Parliament asked Mary to take action against him, the king. We don't like him. Make him leave. William arrived in England with an army that scared James. He abdicated and fled the country, leaving the crown to Mary. But Mary didn't want to be queen, not on her own. Hey, you want to be king with me? Okay. Because they were both descendants of King Charles I, an agreement was made. William and Mary would have a joint reign. In 1690, James was back with a vengeance and wanted his throne. Gimme. That didn't work. James was mad and disowned his children. How fatherly. Mary and William signed the English Bill of Rights, which started the transfer of their family's power to the government. After William became king... Anne felt shut out by her sister, growing farther away from the crown. The sister's grudge persisted until Mary's death, when William became the sole monarch of Britain. I am the king. William fell off a horse and died, and with no squabbling children, Anne became queen. Finally. Anne needed to make sure she'd have an heir, so there wouldn't be another succession crisis. So she hit the streets looking for a man. Anne met and married George Oldenburg, Prince of Denmark. Hi. George was forced to marry Anne because she was also a Protestant. They tried and estimated 18 times for a child. Uh, why are there records of this? Only one child survived infancy, but then died when he was 11 from smallpox. After ruling for 14 years, Anne died with no heir. The crown went to the House of Hanover because King James I's daughter Elizabeth had a daughter named Sophia. Sophia married Ernest Augustus and had a child named George. He was the closest living relative to Queen Anne. So he became King George I. Before becoming king, George married Sophia Dorothea of Sel. She was forced to marry George but refused to be associated with him. They had two children, Sophia and George who later became George II. George became king in 1727. Sophia was imprisoned in Castle Alden under house arrest by George for abandoning him. She died in the castle 30 years later. Weeks later, he died from an unexpected stroke. In 1705, George's son George married Carolyn of Ansbach. When George's father George became king in 1714, he became Prince of Wales, and when he died... George became king and reigned until his death in 1760. George's son George had a son Frederick, but he outlived his son by nine years, so after Frederick's death, his grandson George, the son of George's son's son, George III, became king. George III is currently the third longest reigning monarch after Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth II. George III was one of ten children to Princess Augusta of Saxe-Gotha and Frederick, Prince of Wales. Shortly after becoming king, he met the daughter of a German duke, Charlotte of Mecklenburg-Strelitz. They got married and had 15 children. 
George's oldest son, George, married in 1795 to Princess Carolyn of Brunswick. Carolyn was the daughter of George III's sister. They had a child, separated, and then Carolyn went to Italy. See you never. In 1788, King George III became violently insane and was restrained. His son, George, acted as regent until he returned to the throne one year later, but shortly went mad again and was permanently removed from the throne and lived in Windsor Castle until his death in 1811. When George IV became king, his absentee wife, Carolyn, returned after six years with the intention to become queen consort, but she never did. She died, and their only legitimate child died, leaving him with no heir after he died in 1830. George IV's younger brother, William, ascended to the throne age 64, the oldest, crustiest king ever. William was the second son of George III and Charlotte of mecklenburg strelitz William's parents had a third son named Edward. In 1863, Edward married Princess Alexandra of Denmark. When William died, his predeceased brother's daughter, Victoria, became queen at only eight months old. In 1840, Victoria married Prince Albert of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha. They had nine children, and many of them married into royal families across Europe. Victoria died in January 1901 of a stroke. Her oldest son, Edward, ascended the throne. His eldest son, Albert, was engaged to Mary of Teck. Third time's a charm. But he died a couple weeks later. His younger brother, George, thought, What better way to have an heir than to marry my dead brother's fiancée? In 1893, George got engaged to Mary of Teck, and they had six children. George became king after his father died in 1910. When George died, his eldest son ascended the throne but he wanted to marry an American. Absolutely not. So he had to denounce his titles. Edward's brother George VI became king. He ruled until his death in 1952. His daughter Elizabeth's coronation was June 2nd, 1953. When she was born, she was the third in line for the throne after her father and uncle Edward. When Elizabeth was 14, World War II began, and it was recommended to her parents that they go to Canada until the war ended. I think you should take Elizabeth and Margaret to Canada to hide from the bombings of the war. Her mother refused the suggestion. The children won't go without me. I won't leave without the king. And the king will never leave. On her 21st birthday, while on tour in southern Africa, she pledged... I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family, to which we all belong. When Elizabeth was 15, she met her second cousin, Prince Philip, and after exchanging letters since the age of 13, they were granted permission to announce their engagement. Philip held Danish and Greek titles and was not allowed to marry Elizabeth unless he relinquished them to become a British subject. Elizabeth and Philip have four children together. Charles is the oldest, and the first in line for the throne. He married Diana, and they had two children, William and Harry. He's not very popular with the public due to his divorce with Princess Diana. When the Queen dies, and Charles either becomes king or steps down, William will be the new king. Charles remarried to Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall. William married Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, in 2011, and they have three children. Harry married Meghan Markle in 2018, and they have one child named Archie. And who knows which second cousin Archie will marry? Voiced by Scott Effler Everything by Lauren Effler Pestering by Emily Good in British Accent by British Brian